Here's how to build a DIY 3D printable sequential shifter for your racing sim. The concept and desire behind creating this shifter was to design it to be strong and long lasting, but also cost effective and without the need for any special components. I've been using my shifter for six months now and it's been absolutely flawless. The plans for this shifter, assembly guide, 3D printer files and Arduino code are all available for download completely free. But first, let's quickly go over the components required. For the 3D printed components, we have the main shifter body, the shifter shaft, the bottom cover for the main shifter body, four switch spaces, an optional 3D printed shift knob, although you can use a real car shift knob if you wish, provided it has an M10 by 1.5 pitch thread, and lastly, a pivot pin and pivot cap. Although these are optional, I'll go into a little bit more detail on that later. In total, print time will be about 1.5 days and requires around 500 grams of filament. I chose to use PLA and have had no structural issues in using this plastic over long-term use. And for the additional non-3D printed components, we have a steel or aluminium pivot tube, 64 millimeters long, 12 millimeters OD and a 1.6 millimeter wall thickness. Or alternatively, if you cannot source uh, the pivot tube, you can choose to use an M12 bolt around 75 millimeters long and an M12 nylock nut and a couple of washers for either end. As you'll see when we get onto assembly, I've gone with an aluminum pivot tube. Of course, an M12 bolt will do effectively the exact same job. You'll need two limit switches, one Arduino Pro Micro with an 18 mega 32 U4 chip, a micro USB cable to connect the Arduino to your PC. The length will depend on your particular SIM setup, but at least about two meters is probably the minimum length you will want. You'll need four M3 hex cap head bolts around 70 millimeters long. To go with the bolts are four M3 washers and four M3 nylock nuts. These are used to affix the limit switches to the main shifter body. And if you didn't go with the optional 3D printed shift knob, you'll need a real shift knob with an M10 by 1.5 millimeter thread. You'll need one M10 by 1.5 bolt to affix the shift knob to the shifter shaft of about 65 millimeters in length. The head of the bolt needs to be cut off to make a full length of all thread or threaded rod. This will thread into the shifter body and also into the shift knob itself to affix the two together. You'll need two M10 by 1.5 hex cap head bolts around 30 to 35 millimeters long. These will act as shift shaft stoppers to set the shift point travel when you change gears up or down on the shifter. You'll also need a length of wire to wire the Arduino to the switches. You can choose to either solder the wire directly to the switches or use some sort of push on or crimp on connector. And of course, some solder for your wiring. You'll need two shifter springs with a spring wire diameter of about 1.4 millimeters, an overall OD of 14 millimeters in diameter and an overall length of about 40 millimeters. The springs in this video are only 0.8 millimeter wire diameter and proved too weak. So I did end up changing to stiffer spring wire that produced a much nicer shift experience. Feel free to try different spring weights and see what suits your specific preference. You'll need two small countersink screws to affix the bottom cover to the main shifter body. And lastly, you'll need two shifter ball plungers, also known as ball springs. Some of the tools you'll need for assembly include a soldering iron, hex or allen keys, hacksaws or angle grinders to cut bolts, files to clean up any burrs, a drill with a 12 mm drill bit, some small pliers to assemble the smaller nuts and bolts, some wire cutters and various small hand tools to clean up the prints, such as hobby knives or files, and you may also need a tap and die set. Now it's on to the printing and assembly process. Firstly, for the parts that require 3D printing, their print orientation and required part strength does vary, but is relatively obvious. 
I've included an image here for the ideal print orientation. Here is a breakdown of each part. The main shifter body is printed standing upright and with relatively high wall count and infill percentage, as the top section is under quite a bit of force when you smash through the gears, particularly while in an aggressive race. I suggest three walls and around 50% infill. Support material is recommended for this part. The shifter shaft is printed laying on its side. Again, relatively high wall count and infill percentage, much the same as the main body. The small bottom cover is simply to retain and protect the Arduino, so it does not need to be printed with any level of high strength. I went with two walls and 10% infill. The four switch spaces are printed on their sides with the holes facing up. These are not under any large force, but you may have a little pressure applied to them when shifting. I went with two walls and a 30% infill. Probably overkill. Note that there are four of these required. You may choose to print two rotated 180 degrees so the side touching the bed is mirrored if you're a little pedantic like me. The optional shift knob can probably be printed at about the same spec as the switch spaces, so that would be two walls and 30% infill. If you wanted a more weighty shift knob, perhaps increase that infill as high as you're willing to go. The pivot pin and pivot cap are also optional. These are only required if you opt for the metal pivot tube as I've used in this video, not required if you use a standard M12 bolt to retain the shifter shaft to the main body to act as your fulcrum. These I went with 100% infill as they're quite fragile and small anyway. Note, after everything has been printed, you may need to use a 12 mm drill bit to lightly ream out the holes of the main shifter body or shifter shaft if you cannot get your pivot tube or pivot bolt into place cleanly, or if your shifter does not rotate smoothly, it all depends on the quality of your prints. If you do choose to do this, do so carefully, or you could easily cause damage and need to reprint. Also, you may need to clean up any of the M10, M12, or M5 threads with a tap and die. In particular, the pivot pin and pivot cap, which are quite a small thread. Next up, we need to program the Arduino. I won't detail the exact finer process of how to program an Arduino, but I have included my code for you with the files to download. And it also includes the joystick library by Matthew Hieronymus. If you haven't programmed an Arduino before, there are plenty of tutorials and guides to get you started. But essentially, you load up the Arduino software, load in the sketch included in my download, and burn it to the Arduino. Some small Arduino reminders though. First, you'll need to add the joystick library to your Arduino IDE. Second, you'll want to ensure you have the board set up to Arduino slash Genuino Micro. Third, note that I've specified inputs five and eight for the two shift switches in the Arduino sketch. You can change these in the INO file if you prefer to use different IO ports. It really doesn't matter which pin is used as long as the code matches where you solder your wires to. And once the sketch is successfully uploaded to your Arduino, you should now see the Arduino appear as a joystick or gamepad in your game controllers window. You can access this by typing joy.cpl into the Windows start menu, and you can test the two switch inputs by bridging the IO port to ground with a length of wire on the Arduino. With the Arduino programmed, we can proceed with the first part of wiring it up. You want to measure out four generous lengths of wire, two for each of the switches. Wire needs to be long enough to travel up from underneath through the channels in the main shifter body to the top where the limit switches will mount. Remember you'll need two wires per switch. Give yourself some extra length which you can trim down later. I cut four lengths of around 20 centimeters. Strip the ends of your wires and tin them lightly with solder. Then solder the four wires onto your Arduino. One wire for each switch will go to a ground pin on the Arduino, and one wire for each switch will go to one of the I.O. pins. Note a reminder, by default the code specifies to use pins five and eight. As I mentioned earlier, you can change this if you wish. Now for the final physical assembly. This physical assembly process is not overly difficult or complex, but some components can be a little fiddly to get everything lined up or fit in place. Start by inserting the shifter travel stopper bolts 
into either side of the lower part of the main body. These will limit how far the shifter can swing back and forth and can be adjusted to define that limit. Now install the 3D printed shifter shaft down into the main body and align the pivot holes. Insert either the pivot tube or pivot M12 bolt with a washer to act as the fulcrum of the shifter. If you opted for the pivot tube solution, it should sit flush or slightly inside the inner edge of the main body on both ends, allowing room for the caps to sit flush once they're threaded in. Note you may wish to lightly lubricate this point, however I haven't found it necessary for my shifter. Now is the time to then install the shifter springs. These sit over the travel stopper bolts and add tension to the shifter, and they help keep it centered. These are perhaps the hardest part of the install as they can be tough to get in place without flying out at you and taking out an eye, so take care. Then thread in the M10 stud into the top of the shifter and you can thread on your shift knob of choice, either a 3D printed one or something from a real car. Once soldered, route the wires up through the main shifter body and set the Arduino in its final position. You may want to install the bottom cover now just to hold the Arduino in place while we continue with the assembly. Leave the wires hanging loose for now, we'll finalize the wiring a little later on. Now it's time to install the limit switches to either side of the shift lever. Each limit switch has a switch spacer set either side of it with the long M3 bolts securing them in place. Don't forget a washer for each bolt. Do take care here when installing the switches and spacers to route the wiring to the outside of the switches so that it is clear and not snagged in the way. Secure the limit switches in place with the long M3 bolts and their nylock nuts and washers. I chose nylock nuts here to mitigate the risk of the nuts coming loose. Note there is plenty of adjustability here in these switches so you can again choose the travel of your shift lever before the switch is engaged depending on the type of shift action and travel distance you prefer. If you've opted to include ball plungers, thread them into the sides of the main shifter body now and leave them relatively loose. You can then tension them up later once you start to use the shifter and wear it in a bit. You can now secure the pivot tube with the pivot pin and cap. These are simply tightened by hand or you can secure your pivot bolt with an M12 nut and a washer. We can now install the wiring onto the switches for good. You can either choose to trim the wire down, tin the end and then solder them directly to the switch pins, or you may choose to use a crimped on lug. It's totally up to you. Finally, we can now connect the micro USB cable to the Arduino, and if you haven't already, secure the bottom cover with two small screws. Now it's time to install the shifter onto your SIM rig. The shifter main body has four perimeter mounting holes that accept M6 bolts. Their pattern is 116 millimeters apart on the length and 74 millimeters apart on the width, center to center. These can be used to affix to your racing SIM rig. You will need to find some form of bracket or plate to suit your particular setup. Once your new shifter is firmly affixed to your rig, connect the USB cable to your PC Again, open up Windows Game Controllers by typing joy.cpl into the Windows Start menu and verify that your shifter is detected as a joystick slash gamepad. Now, launch your sim game of choice, map your shift up and shift down keys and enjoy your racing. Your new shifter is now finished. Congratulations. Again, a reminder that the plans for this shifter, assembly guide, 3D printed files, and Arduino code are all available completely free. The link is, of course, in the description. All that I ask in return for offering this stuff for free is perhaps you want to give this video a like or share it with your mates. Thanks very much for watching.